Hello everyone, good morning. So I am talking to you on Facebook. Hi Facebook. Hi guys, welcome. And I'm talking to you on Instagram, my Instagram stories. I'm a little late today. I typically like to teach every single day around 12 noon. But today I had the most fabulous conversation with Maria Shriver. So go to Maria Shriver's Instagram page and I had the most lovely conversation with one of my favorite people and she was so lovely and generous and allowed me to share some of my thoughts. So do go to Maria Shriver's Instagram page and listen to our lovely talk and share it. So that's why I'm a little late. Uh, I've been doing these teachings every day. I call them viral wisdom and today is number 10. If you on Instagram want to watch these talks, go to my Facebook page. They're all there and archived or on my YouTube or sign up for my newsletter and you will get them there. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Tell me where you're from. Hi, Facebook. I'm trying to do both. Hi, guys. So tell me where you're from. Check in with me. Tell me that you'll watch Maria Shriver's conversation with me on Instagram and give her support for all the great things she does. Where are you guys signing in from? Say hello and let me know. So for today's a viral wisdom conversation, I would like to talk about the concept of time. Most of us live bound to time. And if you really are honest with yourself, your entire life is predicated, defined, adjudicated, destroyed, stressed out by this idea of time. Think about it. And as parents, you will see this even more. Because when it's just you, it's okay if you're a crazy stressed out person running from one thing to another, you don't pay attention. This is just you. But when you're a parent, you begin realizing how time and children don't go together. Like if there's one thing that's so difficult for children to pay attention to is time. Why are we yelling at our children? Because they're always late. Why are we yelling at our teenagers? Because they're spending six hours in the bathroom, not only wasting our money, but also wasting our time. Why are we upset with kids in general around school? Because they don't get the stuff in on time. They waste our time. They're losing time. They're dawdling and lollygagging all around, dragging their feet. Children have no idea about time. And we call them children, even more so with disdain and insult because they don't understand time. And one of the most amazing things that we adults have is that we understand time, right? And so we think we're amazing because we know what's going to happen in the future and we know how to be on time and we tell our children to be on time and time is such a precious commodity. Yes, but now I'm going to turn this idea that we adults have around time on its head. Okay, so are you ready? It takes a little time, so give me some time to explain to you how you've been royally screwed by your idea of time and messing your children up and ruining their childhoods because of this idea around time. So time, let's talk about time. This virus in this current crisis, and a crisis is only a turning point, a turning of what to what, a turning from what was to what is. A crisis is a turning point from what was to what is. So by its nature, a crisis is all about time because it's taking away from us the time that was to the present time. And we're like, huh? Why are you taking away what was? And can you please put us into what we think will be? And nope, a crisis doesn't do that. A crisis puts things right smack dab where they're meant to be, which is here and now. A crisis snatches us from the lull and the complacency of our past and our pretense that we knew the future. And it just rudely slaps us because it steals the past, 
steals the future and it brings us where we are now and we don't like it. We don't like it because we like the past and we like the future. We don't like living in the present. That's why children are yet another reason annoying to us because children only live in the damn present. And we're like, can you live in the future, please? We want our children to live like us in the future. And children so annoying, so damn annoying. They live only in the present. Watch children, they live in the present. Well, who has time to live in the present? There is no time, you see, we tell them. There is no time for play. There is no time for relaxation. There is no time for enjoying your childhood, right? There is absolutely no time because we have chop chop. We have to get to the future. We have to get to the future. So we transplant our children from the present and we pack our children's lives with all sorts of insane activities like how to make, you know, music out of uh, chimes and how to, uh, you know, know every bird's names. No offense to birds, but we have to know every bird's names. And we have to speak 10 languages and we have to, you know, know all sorts of facts and fiction about uh, the world so that we can create a delicious, long, impressive resume for the future, for the future. So we tell our children, Come on, come on, we don't have time for childhood. There's no time for, time for childhood. Childhood is only when you were a year old. When you couldn't talk, that was childhood. Your childhood is over and the child is three years old and the child is like, I am just entering my childhood. And you're like, nope, it's over. Now we are in the phase of childhood called preparing for the future, preparing for adulthood. So join the crazy town that we now live in, it's called preparing for the future. You don't live in America or Ohio, you live in preparing for the future. And the kid is like, no, I want to play. And you're like, you can play when you are rich and you can play when you're married or you can play with your children, but you're not playing now. This is not the time to play. This is the time to prepare for the future. So we have done this insanely. You won't admit it because you know, you're probably a parent. But all the non-parents will be like, yeah, I see how crazy the parents are. But you know, we parents, I'm a parent, we don't want to see this about ourselves because we want to see ourselves as glorious. We don't prepare our children for the future because it's for us. We prepare the children for the future because it's for them, right? If they don't prepare for the future, then we are not good, good parents. So we must, they don't know, they just want to play all day, these fools. They don't know. They just want to dawdle and be in the present moment and smell the roses. There is no time. Childhood technically is only like mm, 10 years old because by fifth grade, we have to be building that resume because fifth grade is not fifth grade. Fifth grade is what the seventh graders see and seventh grade is not seventh grade. Seventh grade is what high school will see. And high school is not high school because high school is what colleges will see. So, and then college is not college because college is what the job fairs will see and you know, the fancy companies who come to recruit. And especially if you're a guy, then especially, especially you better because you have to be a provider for your family. So then it's what your wife will see and then what your children, where your children will go to college. And oh my goodness, then we wonder why are we alcoholics and rageaholics and foodaholics. We wonder why. Oh, because we don't live normal. This is not normal. But we have to do this. And we women, you know, we women, we're just so scared of the same things, but just slightly different. We are scared of, you know, also the money we'll have in our banks and the beauty we will still have and you know, where men don't focus on beauty, we women, oh my goodness, we women, we're like all about how we will look in the future. That's why Botox does so well because Botox is not for the wrinkles that I already now have seared in my forehead. I'm obviously too late. My skin is already wrinkled like paper, but now Botox is for, oh, the 20 year olds. So when I go to cut my hair by my 20 year old hairdresser, she'll be like, why aren't you putting Botox? And I'm like, can I just be quiet while I, like, can I not think of my beauty right now? And she's like, well, Dr. Shivali, I put Botox now because Botox is to prevent, just in case the wrinkles go this way and there's a line, just in case, this is when I do it now. When I'm 20, I'm like, oh, you do, huh? 
Well, I miss that bandwagon and I miss the other one. And you all know if you've read my book how I miss the whole bandwagon around my children's, my child's uh, extracurricular activities because I joined uh, my, her first individual class, her first class when she was eight. And that was too late. Eight was too late. It was supposed to have been when she was three. So I was five years too late. And do you know, I could never catch up to those five years ever. My daughter never did a group class ever. She was late for every group class because it was too late. Eight was too late. What was I thinking? Eight, you see, was the end of quote unquote planning for the future. The future had already been planned by eight. I didn't get the memo. I didn't know this crazy culture. I didn't understand that colleges are all about this. So anyway, now my daughter is in 11th grade, yes? So I became smart. I'm like, mm, I know that there's this thing called planning for the future. And I resisted it, resisted it. But by 11th grade, which is where my daughter is right now, currently, although sleeping at 1.15 in the afternoon, currently, right now, is her 11th grade. So I decided that in 11th grade, I will jump off being conscious and enter mainstream because I have to prepare my child for her future and I cannot continue doing the things I have done because she was late in childhood and now she will be late for her future. Literally, my child will be the child who gets late for her future. She will be late to her future, the way I'm going. So 11th grade came and I'm like, that's it. At the start of 11th grade, I was ready with her SAT tutor. And I will not even tell you how much money I have already wasted on the SAT tutor. But I'm like, God damn it, I'm going to be part of this mainstream. I will prepare my child for the future. And by golly, the only year in history, possibly, the damn SATs are being canceled and canceled and canceled. So the last SAT was supposed to be in June, okay, like in two months. And my daughter told me, because she's smart, she said, Mom, do not enroll for the SATs because they will be canceled. And I said, my child, you don't know anything because you don't know the future, but I do. And I am going to plan for the future. So I am going to pay the $54. This is second time canceled, okay? But I'm like, I'm a good parent. I'm going to plan for your damn future. You will not be late to your future, okay? If I can control it. So I enrolled her for her SAT again because I didn't want to miss the boat, because there's a boat to the future. You see, I missed it once, I couldn't miss it again. There is a boat and it leaves at certain times. And apparently, I didn't know this, but now I do. If you miss that boat, if you miss the boat, you miss it, like it's gone. It's like you have a leg, it's gone. The leg is now gone, you can't get that damn leg back. Okay, sorry to use this example. Same with the, this boat to the future. There's only one boat, Everyone jumps on it. And if you missed it, there's something wrong with you and your kid. And no college wants to ever have you and no one wants to marry you apparently. And no one wants to hire you because what was wrong with you? You didn't get on that boat. So I enrolled her for the SAT. And of course, it was canceled. So my daughter told me, mom, I will stop you now. The next time you say, I want to do the SAT for you, Maya. My Maya said to me, I'm going to stop you. Now, until I know for sure, Maya saying, that it is going to be there, for sure, only then, mom, which is only a month and a half or two, will I start planning for it? And I was like, that's no way to plan for the future. You know, well, go ahead. You're going to miss the boat to the future. All I'm saying is I think you should be studying now. And it looks like, by golly, the one year I decided to plan for the future, that this damn future is not coming. It's like, I'm planned. I'm ready. I've already wasted $2,000, $3,000. I could have gone to Hawaii so beautifully, but no, I plan for the future and now this damn future isn't coming. And I'm like, I'm ready for the boat, I'm ready. Where is the future? So now these SATs may actually not even happen. What a bloody joke. What a total joke, the one time. But what a great lesson. So my lesson to you, because I know all of you are planning away. You're not even planning now. You're not still planning that you will do da 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 once this curfew lifts. You're not still planning. You know you are. You totally are. You are saving money to plan for your vacation. You're looking good to plan for the coming out party. You are still planning. And my question to you and to myself is, when the hell will we understand 
that this whole idea of the future is one big, ignorant, sorry to say, foolish as F issue in our head that we can't stop doing it. The virus is showing us you can plan, but don't think about the future. You want to plan? You want to go ahead and put $1,000 for this one's security and that one's college fund? Go ahead. To plan is very different than to think. Plan is just you make the plan and you go ahead. But to think of the future is the delusion. To think about it and to think that you're good. To think that the boat is taking you to the future. To think that this is a boat I should have gotten on. To think that there is something ahead that I need to go toward. This thinking about the future is a darn illusion, people. Never again. This is my lesson. Never again am I going to think about it. Now, I may plan for it. You know, I'm taking my vitamin C in case I get the virus. But I am going to think about it. Because no matter what I think about it, 99% this virus is going has shown me I could be completely wasting my time. I wasted so much time in 11th grade thinking about her future. Now she may not even go to college, which is just horrific to me because I was so ready. I had planned exactly after I drop her where I'm going, with which girlfriends and to which destination. I had planned it all. Now, even that's not going to happen. So even that plan, but it wasn't so much the plan because the plan is just a plan. But the thinking around it, the happiness, the excitement, and then I'll do this and then I'll do that. All that, the virus has shown me. How ignorant are you? So this thinking that we do, right? This storytelling. And then this, and then that, and then that, and this will be so good. And then my kid will go here, and then he'll become an engineer, and then he's all set, right? And I use this example sometimes, that you send your kid to the fancy Ivy League school, you'll spend your 80000 a year, you'll buy him his nice duvet from Target or Bed and Bath and Beyond, you set up his room, and you leave the room, and the damn ceiling falls on your kid in the Ivy League institution, right? So to speak. Right. So what you think is good could actually have been the worst. You should have just sent him to the community college next door. Maybe the kid will still be living. So to speak. Yes, I'm not being insensitive, just injecting some humor in our insanity. So this whole notion that you have, that you got an idea of what the future will bring, that you know anything about the future. Please, please, please let this virus teach you to zip it to shut it, to stop it, to just stop the madness, to stop it. There is no future. There is no future. It's only constructed in our head because guess what? When the future comes, it's not the future. You know what it's called when it comes? When the future comes, it's called the present. So there is no future. Is the past here? Do you see the past here? Let me look. I don't see the past here. The only place the past exists is in here. The only place the future exists is here. The only place that is here is here. Is here. It's called the present. So this whole idea of past and future needs to stop. So anything you did two minutes ago doesn't exist anymore. I'm so sorry to say it exists here. You can make this anything you want. So people often ask me when I go on stage how I felt when I come out. You know, when I leave the stage, how do I feel? Or they'll say, wow, did you, did you know you said this and this was so insightful? And I literally have learned, for the most part, to not listen to myself, to my thoughts. I don't remember. I don't uh, have any idea. I don't go back and watch because it's not here. It's not here. And if it's not here, then it doesn't need to be here. Because whatever needs to be here, will be here. So often when people come to my workshops or even now, they're taking notes, 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 notes. And I always say, don't worry. What is meant to register will be registered. What is meant to be remembered will never be forgotten. What is meant to stay doesn't go away. So don't, don't worry. Allow for the present moment to take over and live fully here. Let your thoughts, if any, be about the here and now. Because any thought about the past is useless. 
It's just based on your memory, on your conditioning, on your belief system. Any thought about the future is complete sh chicanery. You're, you're a fraud psychic. You're completely a fraud. And you're putting money in your bank as if you're a psychic. You're not a psychic. The psychics are not psychic. Because I don't know any psychic who predicted this. I don't know anyone who called me and said, Oh, this is going to happen. Now some few while from somebody, somebody will move some book to show something. It's okay. That doesn't mean they were right. Because many things they were wrong about. So my point is, don't depend on the psychics, yes? My point is, don't depend. Don't desire. Don't want to know the future. Now, why do we want to know the future? And why do we cling to the past? Well, it's very obvious. Because not only are we dumb, as can be, sorry, but we are desiring control. Control is also a, uh, a desire of the not so smart. Because smart people, really, really wise and smart people, know that there is no control. Do you know what the weather will be when you go outside? Why can't just the weather have taught us that we have no control? Why can't the weather, which is such an obvious indication of life, right? What's the weather? We always check what's the weather. Why do we check what's the weather? Because we don't know the weather. That means the weather is not meant to be known. Why? Because it keeps changing. Why does it keep changing? Because its essence is to keep changing. What does that mean? That the nature of life is to keep changing, is to keep evolving according to the humidity, the moisture, the moon, the tide, how much pollution. There are many factors that cause the next moment. So we're not meant to know the next moment. And whether nature tells us that. Do you know exactly when the leaf will bloom or will fall and the rose will bloom? Because you're not meant to know. You're not meant to know. Right now, there's some guidelines. This cold, this cold, da 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 da. da, da, da. You know, there's some equations. Sure, I said you can make some plans based on some equations, some generic formula, but please understand don't think more about it. Don't put stock in it. Don't put your money, not too much, on it. And certainly don't put your emotion into it. Because if you put your emotion into it, now you're screwed. Now you've married your identity with it. You see? And that's where suffering begins. Because not only do you do the foolish thing to think about it, now you put emotion into it. Now that's it. Gone. Now when that doesn't happen, right? You didn't get married at 22. Didn't get married at 28. Didn't have a child at 42. Didn't have a child at 48. Now you are devastated because you put your emotion into that. You were addicted to that relationship you had with the future. And future didn't say have a relationship with me. Future says I don't even exist. Future is very clear. Future says I don't exist. It's an idea, a, a simulation, a, a story. Future is very clear. Past is very clear. Past is says I'm P-A-S-S-T because it has the word ass, A-S-S -S in it. Really, it should have been double S. P-A-S-S-T because the past is finished. It's not here. The only thing called the here is the present. So the future didn't tell us to marry it. The future didn't say put your money in it. The future didn't say want me or not want me. The future is like, I don't even exist. What are you talking about? You keep calling me, but I don't exist. So when we begin to understand that the reason we're doing all this construction of the past, of the future, is because we don't know how to live in time. Because the only way to live in time is to live in time, which means right here, right now. But it is too scary to live right here, right now. Because you know what that will mean? That will mean you have to show up. You have to show up. Somebody writes, I have to have a drink to process this. I know, I'm sorry. You have to show up <laughs> with a drink to your present moment. That means you can't hold on to the past and you can't hold on to the future. You know what this means? It means you have to resolve your past. You know how we keep bringing up the past in our lives or we keep getting re-traumatized in the present moment? It's because the past has not been healed. That means we have to heal the past. That means we have to forgive, we have to release, we have to clean, we have to shred, we have to let go. Who has time to do all this? 
it's so much easier, don't you think, to just carry it on your back all your life? Heavy, heavy weight. Who has time to stop, look in the sack, clean it out? Only those silly people who go to therapists have time. I don't have time, so I'm just going to carry it on my back. So we carry it on our back and we infiltrate every present moment with all those pebbles. And then the present looks just like our past. And we're like, wow, you're mean too, like my mom. And you're mean too, like my, my seventh boyfriend. And I'm just finding the, the worst husbands because I have such bad luck. You don't have bad luck. You've been carrying the past. You've just been carrying the past and you're recreating the same version of what's in that bag. And the second way we can't live, the reason we can't live in the present is because to not know the future makes us feel like we did as children. And most of us didn't feel too great as children. We didn't feel empowered or sovereign or in control. So pretending to predict the future, thinking about the future makes us feel like we're in control. And we make our children crazy. We make ourselves crazy by imagining we are in control. Actually, we're not in control. And it's only when we understand this that we begin to truly live, which is only in time, in the present time. And in order to live in the present time, you have to learn how to be here. And part of that is learning how to meditate. So at after these talks every day, I go to another page to meditate. So people will put that link in and come and learn how to meditate with me. And when you learn how to meditate, you learn to slow down those thoughts about the past and let them go. Slow down the thoughts about the future and let it go. And you begin to enter the present moment. And now you begin to live without the future, without the past. So now when your kid slams the door in your face and acts like a lunatic, you watch your thoughts and your thoughts say, oh my God, I'm raising a total loser who's going to end up in jail. Then you notice, oh, that's a future-based thought. I really don't know. You come back to the present. You're like, oh, child has slammed door. Time for me to leave this child alone a little bit. End of story. Most of our reactions of great reactivity it's only because we have foretold psychically because we think we're psychic some version of the future that causes great anxiety in us. And the minute we think of that future, it causes anxiety, we react. The present moment is often not that terrible. It is our thoughts about the future that make the present moment terrible. So live in the as is, not in the as if. Do not think about the future anymore. You can make some plans and provisions, make your will, you know, tell your friends when I die, you get these 10 shoes. Sure, sure. Go ahead and make some plans. But after that, after your, your ducks are in order, stop thinking about the future ever again. This virus has shown us your thoughts about the future were all a blooming waste of time. Okay, if the virus was a teacher, a Zen master, the virus would be laughing at us for this aspect. The virus is also sad that we're having such a hard time and we are and there's tragedy and death. Yes, but there are valuable lessons here. And one of them is that we have never had a healthy relationship to time. We have been ruled and enslaved and marauded and stressed by time. And it is time for us to change our relationship with time, end the old marriage with time which was based in the past and the future, and marry a new relationship with time, which is only based in the present moment. So in 30 minutes, I'm gonna go meditate on another page. I will put the link up once I end this video and come and meet me there. I will teach you a little bit about meditation. Stay in the present. Bye Instagram, bye Facebook. Hi, Instagram. I've heard that my Instagram audience is very different than my Facebook audience. So special shout out to you guys. I will see you all tomorrow around 12 Eastern. Bye.